I feel like the majority of people think Inazuma 11 Go 1 is the worst Inazuma 11 game. But what if I was to tell you that in the competitive scene, it's actually the most balanced and best to play? Without further ado, let's find out why. So why exactly is Go 1 so balanced? Well, for starters, movesets are now fully customizable with the exception of Tezcat and Biolong Zero Magnums. So this means that every character in the game is now viable to use in the meta, no matter how bad their stats are. It should also be noted that Stab, aka same type attack bonus, is also very minimal in this game. So it's mostly about move versus move elements, which means the player will have to strategize and guess what their opponents will choose. Also, when it comes to skills, this is the only instance of stat boost skills being used for the meta, as no skill in the game boosts the power of spirit moves. So Catch Boost Plus, Technique Boost Plus, and Kick Boost Plus are all viable to use. So now let's go over different positions and what their moveset is gonna look like. For a goalkeeper, they'll have either Capable Hands or Gravity Point, either Bridge to Nowhere or God Hand V, Warp Step, and Side Swipe on the slim chance that your keeper gets caught in a Command Duel outside of the penalty box, and then Catch Boost Plus and Technique Boost Plus. A Defender would have Side Swipe, Warp Step, Wall of Atlantis, Ozone Flayer, and then the skills Big Moves and Put Your Back Into It. Big Moves increases the power of your special moves by 1.2 times, but at the cost of a 1.2 times TP usage. While Put Your Back Into It does the same thing, but instead of increasing the cost of TP, it increases the cost of FP. A midfielder's moveset will look like this. Side Swipe, Warp Step, either Wall of Atlantis, Ball Lightning, or Rising Dragon. Now, you're gonna wanna have your forwards be either Spirit Forwards or non-Spirit Forwards. What this means is your Spirit Forward is gonna be the player who is gonna have their Fighting Spirit active for basically 99% of the time. So their moveset, instead of having big moves and put your back into it because they don't care about their normal TP, are gonna have Critical and Kick Boost Plus. While their other moves can be Triple Threat, Warp Step, Side Swipe, and Ballista Barrage, or Emperor Penguin 7. On the other hand, your non-Spirit Forward is gonna have big moves and put your back into it. Alongside Warp Step, Side Swipe, Triangle ZZ, and Triple Threat, which is the strongest move in the game. But what fighting spirits do you wanna be using? Well, off the bat, you do not wanna use any defensive spirits. Well, for your goalkeeper, you want them to have either White King or Black King. This is the strongest fighting spirit as it boosts the user's power for every male player on the pitch. Though keep in mind it is weak to triple threat. Some other options are Demogorgon or Atlas and Margin. As for dribble spirits, you've got White Pawn, Black Pawn, Pegasus, and Leon. And for shooting spirits, you've got Serta, White Wyvern, Black Butcher, Musashi, and Pendragon. And finally, let's just go over some last few areas. For the first time, Go One lets you choose a coach for your team. There isn't really a set one to use as you have to choose the best coach that fits your team as they increase slash decrease stats depending on your players. But one of the most popular ones is Alex Zabel. Namely, as he gives Biolong plus 30 kick. The most common formation is F Eternal Light as there's two well-placed strikers and a central defender that is the easiest to drag back for shot blocking. Go One is essentially 90% skill and 10% luck. It's all about knowing when and how to perform long or short passes, and positioning your players to shot block is vital to win matches. A common strategy is to see White Wyvern and Black Butcher spirit bonding to make Arthur, as Caliburn is very hard to stop. For the flow of the game, it's common to be in the spirit summon phase for the first 10 minutes of each half, and when all spirits have been sorted, the game flows at a very fast pace. However, the reason why Go One's meta is one of the least played, just like IE1, is because of the game's clunkiness. Multiplayer just feels a lot more laggy compared to the next two games, which is a real shame, as its meta is arguably the most balanced. So there you have it. That's why Go One has one of the best competitive scenes yet no one plays it. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that classic YouTube stuff. And thank you to Zikri AK for helping me with today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.